So I'm really excited today because I have Kathy. It's Denoyer, right? Denoyer. 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 I am so sorry. I went back and forth which way I was going to ask first. Um, Kathy has a company called Reclaiming Your Time and Space. And she, um, let me just give a little bit from her um, bio because fascinatingly, she has a lot of background in things like logistics and project management adjacent things, including aviation navigation in the Air Force and bringing medical devices to market, it sounds like. Um, and so those are some pretty big projects. And now she is using her skills as a professional organizer to help small businesses, especially other professional organizers, right? Um, create the automated systems that allow them to run their businesses. So I am super excited to talk to Kathy today for a couple of reasons. But one is that she has that brilliant background. And there's a few of us that have interesting backgrounds that are adjacent to professional organizing. So I was an inventory control manager for a while, which is weirdly logistics and yet not full on logistics, but it helps. Every little bit helps. Um, and so I'm super excited. Welcome to the show today, Kathy. Oh my gosh. I am so glad to be here. Hey, everybody. Glad you guys are here and looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. So we were just realizing that We've known each other online only for what three, four years? Yep, about like three that, years. Around yeah. that. Um, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to have her on the show. There's a lot of Facebook groups out there, there's a lot of Instagram organizers, there's a lot of different kinds of organizers out there in the world. And you know, I like to share different people's perspectives. And one of the reasons I was so impressed with Kathy is. Even though she's, you're not, are you a member of NAPO? I'm not a member of NAPO. Right. So you you live in that rare area of organizers. It's <laughs> I don't think you have to join NAPO to be a great organizer. But there is something about the level of professionalism among organizers that are not members of NAPO that often gets in their own way. And so you are one of the rare exceptions where I'm like, she's on it. She knows what she's doing. She's getting the information and bringing it to her work. And so that is why I invited you on the show. Fantastic. Um, I don't think everyone necessarily has the same level of expertise and background, but you bring that forward and that's what helps create your professionalism, I believe. Do you, Thank you. Would you say that I you've noticed that as well in the groups? I, I, yeah, definitely. We, we both commented on different um, posts where it's like mm -hmm. slapping self on forehead and we kind of bring them around to this is a profession. Yes. Do, NAPO is a great organization. I have nothing against NAPO whatsoever. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. resource, great organization. Yeah. But we can still be professionals without being a NAPO member. So yes. just rising our industry yes. to that higher level is important. I agree. And for those of you that don't know, because we're speaking, organizers speak. <laughs> NAPO is actually the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. Um, and it is the organization that helped me get my um, CPO credential. So that certified professional organizer thing. Um, and it is not to say that every member of NAPO is super professional. Every once in a while, yeah. I'm like, what is happening over here? But <laughs> I do think that there is, and, and I think it's an education thing, both on us as individual organizers and as from some of the groups, that there is a level of expertise that some of us bring to the table that is just not in every single organizer out there. And that is not to say you can't get a good result with some of those people. It depends on what result you're looking for, though. Precisely. So Precisely. we got we to gotta start with the uh, what is it you're trying to achieve situation. Um, but tell me a little bit about what brought you into uh, organizing. What made you change your profession? Because that's a pretty high paying profession that you gave up to scoot over, <laughs> right? Well, I technically, I didn't give it up. I was downsized. Oh, so that helps so, you make the decision. So, yeah, so that would help. <laughs> and I was in corporate land for a long time. And I was implementation project manager for North America. So I had like 150 projects running at once. I learned a Kaizen system. I learned to work with different managers. Um, and when they downsized us, because we had a record sales year, because that's what they do <laughs> in corporate right. America. Now um, we're making money. We don't need the people that made us the money. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, ugh, 
So I would just burn out, wore out, and I kind of did an assessment of like, what are my skill sets? And then what kind of work life do I want to have? And I didn't know professional organizing was really a thing. I didn't really know that it was had all the variety to it. So there's many different mm -hmm. niches that people can get into yes. and really focus on. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So then um, I ran across Adam and Cynthia Murray, mm -hmm. who have Cultivate Mastermind. Uh, they have their own training program and such. And I've been with them for three years and I learned my craft with that. But as I was doing business networking, mm -hmm. uh, what came to the forefront, what turned out to be my zone of genius was helping other business owners streamline their business systems, helping them focus on goals that matter and clear out mm -hmm. the noise. Excellent. Um, we are going to pick that up after the break because we do have to take quick breaks here. This is the Streamlined Connection. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino on Bold Brave TV Network, and we're going to get back into about niching and how you can find different niches and it ties back to what we were saying earlier about um what kind what's the result you're looking for when you hire an organizer so we'll be right back after the break the free one minute mail solution works for email too and you can download it at the link below or over there maybe it's a, the link Uh, we're talking about how you pick a niche and, and how what you bring to the table as an organizer can help you figure out what that niche is. So how did you, t you were just saying how you, you were downsized and, and you went and studied with Cynthia and Adam, but right. what, um, how did the niche part come into it for you? So I learned that um, business networking is a thing. So mm -hmm. I joined Authentic Networkers and I ran my own business networking group up here in Fishers, Indiana. So twice a month we were meeting and I learned how to create and develop relationships and mm -hmm. also lift other people up and help them with their businesses. So I belonged to that and I belonged to another business networking group and then one downtown. So I did tons of learning with other people. And when I organized these other entrepreneurs, I wound up in their office space. They're like, I have, you know, the, the business card stack of shame <laughs> and they had, they weren't putting it anywhere and they were losing conversations and they were, mm -hmm. you know, not hitting their goals or they would write down a goal and then the deadline would slip. And I'm like, that's project management. That's so I yep. leveraged what I learned in big corporate America, a global company and simplified it down to people like you and I mm -hmm. with, you know, just quick wins and definite wins that are life-changing. Yeah, you guys, the money is in the follow-up. So it's a crazy so corporate thing and we don't want to do it, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. I have it's gotten true. so many clients when other organizers don't call the people back, even for residential jobs. It's like, what did you expect? Like, are you yeah. in business or not? So um, follow-up is key. I love that. So who are your typical clients? I know you work with a lot of organizers. Are they all being funneled through Cynthia's program or are they nope. you picking them up here and there? I'm picking them up in other organizing groups. Mm -hmm. um, so Facebook is where I farm. So I literally, mm -hmm. you know, I develop relationships. I run workshops. I have a lot of lead, what we call in the industry, lead magnets. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here are 50 local lead sources that you haven't thought of for possibilities oh, around one. finding business for <laughs> as a professional organizer, right? So that's yeah. my latest lead magnet. Um, I just did my uh, roadmap to clients workshop last night, mm -hmm. five new leads out of that. So right. it's just building relationships and having conversations, finding out what matters, where they're at, where they want to go, and then showing up as the person that can get them there. Yeah. Um, that leads me to ask you, uh, how do you feel about repeating the content that you use over and over versus creating a new thing every single time you offer some sort of workshop. So what I've learned, what I've learned is that people need to hear it again and again and mm -hmm. again, the same thing over and over again. I even invite guest speakers in who say the same thing I do, but all of a mm -hmm. sudden it lands with the person that I've been talking to for a while because right. they weren't in a space to hear it yet. Yes. Or they just, their brain had to hear it for the 15th time, <laughs> so, which yeah. is fine. <laughs> so, no, I, I found the same thing. I have, um, you know, there's so many organizers that'll, or all small business people, actually, they yes. put their, yeah. they put all their heart and soul into their business and then they open their doors and they're like, what, 
how do I get clients? And it's like marketing. And they're like, well, I have a card oh. or I have a website. And it's like, well, you got to outreach. And then they're like, but they, I've already said that they don't want to hear it again. And it's like, they didn't actually hear it. They, right. <laughs> they didn't might have it. seen it. It was the bear walking across the basketball court when yes. you were supposed to be looking at how many basketball passes there were. So yeah. perception is a thing you can repeat over and over and over and you won't get bored either because if you're good at what you do you're always going to pull in what you heard in a different conversation or what you read or what a uh, potential client said the last time you ran the workshop you're going to incorporate new things so it's absolutely. same topic slightly different format not recreating the wheel every single time absolutely yeah? absolutely there is a framework to it but i mm -hmm. literally the workshop is a back and forth so i give the you know, the how to, and then I ask a lot of questions about where you at, where do you want to go? Give mm -hmm. them ideas. They walk out of the workshop with something they can action on. Right. And so that builds that no like trust because they're like, oh my God, Kathy gave me this great idea. I implemented it. I wonder what her paid programs look like. Yeah, exactly. What does it look like to hire her? So yeah. that's been brilliant. Oh, that's cool. So I also noticed that you brought on a team really early in your business. Did you yeah. go into it thinking I'm going to create some opportunities for other people as well and I'm going to treat this as a real business and make it big or did it yeah. kind of evolve that way? It well, it definitely evolved because the team didn't come on until like fall of last year. So that's when it started. So I started mm -hmm. with one person part-time. My others are part-time as well. They are independent contractors. So I have a social media manager, I have my my own OBM, somebody that keeps mm -hmm. me organized on track. <laughs> Um, and then I have a sales rep. Actually, I have two sales reps now, so that handle mm -hmm. sales calls. Nice. So, because it's 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 a process, right? So, and mm -hmm. it's a journey of walking people from a low to raving fan. Um, and it's it's something you get to invest in. And the other part of that is that I'm helping other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And then with my group coaching, I'm actually bringing in people that will give my members a quick result, and then from that because they're developing a relationship with them so my linkedin expert my seo expert mm -hmm. my marketing expert they can then hire them mm -hmm. for even more stuff but what's within my program is enough to get them an amazing result right oh that sounds good i wish i had known that earlier in my thing i finally have some great team <laughs> awesome awesome it's, it's life changer because you can just it, it's I, I can't do it all and I'm not good at it all. And right. some there's some things I just don't want to do. <laughs> so it's yeah, like, I'm, yeah. I think I'm better than I am at several of the things. So they were hard to let go of. And now I'm realizing, yeah. That's normal. <laughs> that is totally, totally normal. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, yeah, what, what do you think is the hardest thing about managing a team? And we only have a few seconds, but we'll come back to it. Um, making sure that everybody is on the same page and that there's clear communication, that you have a path mm. of here to there to accomplish a task. So typically the first thing I have a VA do is I'll shoot a loom and then they get to transcribe it. That mm -hmm. becomes an SOP. Oh, nice. I like that. We're going to revisit that when we come back. Okay. we got to take another quick break. Uh, this is the Streamlined Connection. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Bold Brave TV Network. And when we come back, we're going to revisit this, how to use um, a process to actually help create your processes, exactly. right? Your standard yep. operating procedures. So yep. we'll be right back. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The links are here somewhere. So you said you send, go through that again. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is a hashtag pro tip from, from me. Yeah. Um, if there's a task that you do repeatedly over and over again, so sending an invoice, creating a newsletter, something that's repetitive and bores the heck out of you, at this shoot a loom video and narrate it like you're talking to a five-year-old. It's like, and then we go here and this is why we do that. And then we go here and this is why we do that. Cause you have that muscle memory. Right. Um, and then their, your VA's first task is to transcribe that and then test it as an SOP. Does it make sense the way you did it? Does it work? Right. 
um, and then they can make, you know, version two, version three of the SOP. So that's the hack. You don't have to write SOPs. You just talk right. it through. Yep. And, and then you let time. you let the assistant actually do it. So I yeah. have been doing this as well and it's coming together. Um, I also, just to add that on everybody, when you do your SOPs, it's nice to have a framework and put each SOP on a separate page. So, oh, yes. if have you have to rewrite the whole book, yep. you're messed up because then it feels like too big. But if you just have to adjust that one procedure because you've changed the software or they've added a feature, yeah. it's so much more easy to find it on one page than it is to flip through a book to find it. So, absolutely. Yeah. That's, Plus, that's if in there. you have the VA transcribe it and test it, because what we write down as instructions will make sense to us. Right. We want the VA to execute it, so it's got to make sense to them. So that's the other great reason to have them transcribe it. Exactly. Sure it and I, yeah, and then it can become a little bit of a, a collaboration when you then review it again and go, well, why did you do it that way? And right. everybody improves and shaves time and it streamlines it. Absolutely. Um, so... You were also talking about this fascinating thing, maps, gaps, and traps. Yes. I want to hear more about that. So this comes from working with your small businesses, or did you bring this from corporate? Oh, I brought it from corporate. It's okay. totally a corporate thing. So it's- I was going to say, it seems a little corporate-y, but <laughs> how you apply for small businesses is probably slightly different. It is slightly different. Yeah. I mean, it definitely scales down. So if you have a goal in mind, you map out your current processes and you map it out. It's like this software does this thing. Uh, this person does that thing from mm -hmm. start of the project to the end result. And you mm -hmm. kind of see where the communications are. Does the software talk to the VA? Does the VA talk to the software? Does the client or mm -hmm. the prospect talk to? So you see, we call them swim lanes. Yeah. And so it's you map like an out old where Gantt chart, is. basically. Yeah, like a Gantt chart um, okay. in, in many ways. And then you look at opportunities to where there's waste. So either there's time waste, there's duplication, or there's gaps where it's like, well, this is why it keeps falling apart because we don't have something in place to connect those two processes or those two milestones, yeah. in fact. So that's how you save time and you simplify because the simplest route is what you really want to go for. Yeah, and, and it's, I think it's hard. Like. It was almost easier when we didn't have software. <laughs> In a sense, <laughs> like, no, you're right. I think you're a right. lot of software out there says it's going to fix all these things for you. And really, it just adds another layer. So I was thinking about it because we know each other from Facebook mostly. Right. And so we were communicating that way. And then all of a sudden, I realized I don't even have her email to send her the stuff. And then right. I was like, OK, so then I had to go into Facebook. And instead of just picking up the phone or emailing, we now have 20 different ways to communicate with people. Right. How do you pick which one is gonna get through? And so, how do you figure out which is the best one? I mean, it applies there, but yeah, do you have any right. tips on how to figure out which communication tool is the best for a situation? So I and does it have to be different? Person, I always ask the person, what is their number one go-to? So like my one, um, Empress Judith, she, I reach out to her by text. Mm -hmm. she's not watching Facebook. She's not wa watching Messenger. Right. I ask people to hit me up in Messenger because I'm like on that 24, not 24 seven, but I'm on that the most. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's ideal for me. But you just ask the people that you're communicating with how mm -hmm. they would best like to, because it's up. It's not your best communication thing. It's how they There's... will see it because you want them to see it. Right. Um, so that they can have that conversation. Um, and then you can also train people. It's like, I, I train people. It's like, I, I only check my email once a day. Yeah. Um, I don't, if you send me an email and you need a response in the next 24 hours, send me a text that you sent me an email. <laughs> right. Which Otherwise, would be helpful if I had your phone number <laughs> before. <laughs> like, I had it once you scheduled, once you booked which show yeah. you wanted to be on, but I didn't have it before that. Come on, um, <laughs> so, yeah. It's, That's okay. Um, but it's yeah. it's part of that learning process, and it's also part of when we're walking our prospect to client journey. Mm -hmm. You got to find out where where do your ideal prospects hang out at, mm -hmm. how do they typically communicate, and then communicate often. So we right. talked about that at the top of the interview about don't just talk about once, keep talking about it, talk about it in seven different ways, get in yeah. their head. It's like what are they what are their you know pain points in their words, right? And then talk about that. 
Yeah. Um, it's funny. It's reminding me just it, with my residential clients, you know, how often people are so irate that their family members put things away wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, did you ever tell them that you like the mugs on this shelf? Well, no, they should just know. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, yeah, some of us see that you keep mugs there because there's mostly mugs there, but there's also these other four things and that other cabinet over there has 12 different things in it. So I think you all are storing by shape, not by <laughs> item. Right. So communicate. What is what, what? This is the shelf where the mugs go. Is almost the same thing as I like communicating by text. Like it's all communication. It is. It honestly yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Um, there's also some favorite tools that you might have at your disposal that we'll get into when we come back. Yep. Um, but Keep, I was not familiar with Keep. And I, I have it bookmarked and I'm going to look at it a little more in depth. I don't yeah. necessarily know if I'm going to swap to a new thing, but I was intrigued because I had never heard of it and I'm in that space a lot. And so mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what you've discovered there. Um, all right. So we have to take this other break. I'm Mary Martizzi Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. We're talking to Kathy and we will speak more about um, communication and using a tool or something to help with that communication amongst your team and with your clients um, when we come back after the break. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Hello and welcome back to the Streamlined Connection. I'm Miriam Ortizzi Pino. This is the Bold Brave TV Network, and we were just talking about communications and how we want to start talking about how certain pieces of software or tools might help you with that communication and and how to go about choosing the best solution for your situation. Um, what, what tips do you have about that? And tell us about this, why you use Keep. Absolutely. Um, which is a tool, everybody. <laughs> it's a tool. It's a tool. It's an amazing tool, but it's a tool. So when you are choosing a tool, what you're trying to do, people, when they looking at software, they're trying to close a gap, right? Mm -hmm. So they mapped yes. out a process. They found some gaps and they're trying to save time. They're trying to make this their processes simpler. So mm -hmm. make a wish list of must haves. It's got to have these right. things. Then nice to haves. It's like, it's okay if it has that. I don't really care. And then the we don't cares. The kind of a trap in that is that some people don't know what's available. They don't know what's possible. Right. So they're like, oh my God, I can like send out an appointment link and it will send them text reminders when it's about to, holy cow, I didn't know that was a possibility. Mm -hmm. I get a business line, what, I, you know, just all the things. Yeah. Um, so showing them different scenarios of different things that it solves helps kind mm -hmm. of open up their mind to the possibilities. So yeah. then make your list, then look at the softwares. I came from corporate. I came from Salesforce, which mm -hmm. is like an elephant gun. Robust. And robust. <laughs> Literally had a Salesforce team mm -hmm. of employees that's like, I need this change. And they're like, okay, we're putting it on the list. It'll happen in a week. <laughs> you know? it's like, yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake. the bottom of the queue. Right. And Salesforce does have a light version, a light version, mm -hmm. um, but it's still too noisy. Yeah. And because I'm about streamlining and saving time, mm -hmm. that was not going to be useful to anybody. And what I was looking for was something that has a business line, appointment making, you can send payments, quotes, invoices, mm -hmm. checkout forms, and nurture your, your people. Mm -hmm. So there's automations around marketing, there's lead pages, there's landing pages, there's checkout nice. forms, all the things mm -hmm. uh, in one spot and pipelines all in one yes. spot. So I created it for my business. I helped other POs do it. We, I refined it. And now I have like, you just, you simply need these things. Mm -hmm. And you'll have an amazing business and you can have the, you know, reminders automated, all the things. So that's yeah. why I chose Keep. Um, there's a couple others out there, HoneyBook and Dubsado, which are mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. But with Keep, it'll grow with you mm -hmm. because of the different versions. And those stop. <laughs> it's like they're limited. It's like, <laughs> right. Which is kind of what happened to me. I mean, I started my, the online portion of my business when things were very new. So mine is very pieced together because I'm very loyal to some of the services that helped me grow. Um, 
but it's getting harder for them all to work together. But I also hesitate on an all-in-one solution because, you know, back in the early 90s, I was a total audiophile. And if you had an all-in-one stereo and one component broke, you had to replace the whole thing instead of having components. Right. And so in my brain, I still go a little bit to that. Like, do I want one company to have all of the details of my business? What happens if they go out? But it's not always a concern for everybody. Well, choose, choose <laughs> wisely. I mean, the company yeah. has been around for almost 20 years now, I think. Yeah. Um, and they have like several employees that are based in the U.S. They have a global mm -hmm. reach. Mm -hmm. um, and just the CRM factor, because it yeah. helps me teach my clients about that the low to rating yes. journey. And so you can literally see once they come into your CRM, you can see that whole conversation, the voicemails are transcribed out every time you call them. Ooh, I mean, nice. it's like everything is in that contact yeah. record. I like that. Um, yeah, I've tried eight maybe different CRMs. Yeah. And every time I find one I love, yeah, something happened. The one I really, really loved was High Rise, but okay. it got absorbed and they stopped selling it as a separate product. It was only part of the bigger, mm. um, what is the thing? Ba uh, Basecamp. Oh, Basecamp. Oh. I didn't like Basecamp as much as I liked the CRM portion. Yeah. So it's all a thing, people. It's about, <laughs> it's about discerning what you need um, right. and want. Okay, so it goes to what you want as well. Yes. So, 100%. I wanted to tie back to you, you know, we have a way of talking through our processes now. So what parts of those process can you find in a software that helps you automate? So if you don't know what you need or what's possible, say, well, I really hate having to retype this or why yes. isn't this right here when, because it, it's part be. of my workflow. And yeah. those are the kinds of things you can add to that list of what you're looking for. Exactly and I think people right. don't realize that that's where you figure that stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Having templates is a beautiful thing. It so really is. Text <laughs> templates, email templates, newsletter templates, even <laughs> frameworks where you just like drop in the new section for the mm -hmm. month, but everything else is already built out and you're just like copy for the next month. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. All of the, all of the things, there's so many things that we take for granted that mm -hmm. we do by hand that can be due now and do it once never again. Right. <laughs> There are some things that can be done once and adjusted every time. True. And there are some things that need to be fresh every time. And and thinking about things in the layers that have to happen can be helpful too. Absolutely. But you brought up a really good point. It's like starting at the goal. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. is the goal? And being super clear on that. It's like at least this many new clients or at least this, you know, income level by month, eight year. Right. So you got to be super spe specific. Yeah. Um, yeah. That always happens, right? Oh, I and I don't want to pay for it. Right. I want to run a business and I want all these features, but I want it to be free. That's not a business. No, that and and my answer to that is always you get what you pay for. Yeah. <laughs> because that's not really going to get it done. I mean, not to say there are some things that I started with the free version and I scaled into. Oh, absolutely. But only when they have the features I actually wanted too, right? Right. <laughs> you don't absolutely. give up features just to get free. <laughs> <sighs> Benefits and features, people. Yeah. <laughs> Staying on that same platform that grows with you is important. So that that's another reason I chose Keep because it, it grows mm -hmm. with. Um, yeah, and, and I wish I had understood that better when I first started as well, but there, there were also maybe a fifth of the number of choices I had when I started. Yeah, it's crazy <laughs> and it's confusing. So having people like us to help mm -hmm. you decide on, you know, what really matters and what's really mm -hmm. going to get you to your goal quicker. Right. Cause you can do it slow and by yourself and you can start out with free, which is fine. But the minute you start making money, reinvest. Yes. A portion in the thing of that. It's going to save the time to yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We're going to have to take another break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And when we come back, I want to get into a little bit of, of the productivity piece of what you think 
um, in terms of um, automating and, and solutions and, and how it affects productivity. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. So tell yes. us tell us how you figure out what, what automations might help your client's productivity. Absolutely. So we always start with the goal in mind. What is their you know, business goal, and then we map out processes. What are they doing now? What are they, what should they be doing? What would they like to be doing? We find the gaps um, and we look at roughly how many hours a week they're spending on each of these things. I have been able to save people like 10 hours a week mm -hmm. because we're automating so much of the back and forth. It's like, when are you available? Um, sending them contracts or agreements. Um, <laughs> Uh, Two hours a day, people, on scheduling and rescheduling alone, probably. Yeah. Oh. yeah. The, the back and forth, it's insane. And so you can either do a book now. It's like, because you've mm -hmm. had the conversation, okay, Tuesday at four, and it sends mm -hmm. them the automatic reminders, both email and text, or mm -hmm. you send them your booking link for that particular appointment type, mm -hmm. and then it sends them the automatic reminders and the text as well. So yeah. that alone saves a ton of time. But also, you know, so many people are like having conversations on their notebooks or in their head or on post-its or something mm -hmm. like that around a, a project or their clients or prospects, and they can't remember what they last talked about. Um, we can't rely mm -hmm. so much on this because we want to be present because if we're thinking back, then we're not being present in the conversation. So having And we remember different every time we remember something. So yeah. You're There's rewriting that. the memory and you might be adding or subtracting things to it too, because memory is a weird thing. Mm -hmm. But if you have it in your CRM, if you have it in that that contact mm -hmm. record, then it'll be obvious and you can just review real quick and then go, okay, this is what's next. You yep. can literally also get in the habit of what's the next task to move them along their journey to hiring you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I love that. Um, oh my God. I'm still just playing in my head some of the conversations I've had with people about how they schedule stuff. I've had clients call me and when I, we, you know, they go to hire me and we yeah. start talking about when we're going to do something, they will offer to reschedule 12 appointments to make it happen. And I'm always like, or we could start next week when you yeah. don't have anything on the calendar, or they will send you a list of 18 different options. Oh, like, good gravy. Oh, so I'm just going to throw this out there. If you aren't using automatic software, and we don't use it for every single kind of appointment, so this is no. going to help everybody. Yeah. But don't start with, when do you want to do it? Say, what's better for you, mornings or afternoons? Right. My next available morning is da-da-da. And that way, you're directing them to your ideal schedule, not theirs. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. No. And it's so much easier to decide between two options than 18. Because so. confused people don't make a decision. Confused people, it's like two options, period. That's no. It. Yep. And That's you it. can further protect your time by saying, I only schedule those kinds of appointments on Fridays in first thing in the morning or Tuesday right after lunch, whatever right. your schedule is all about. You slot them in there, not... Anything and everything is possible. Exactly. But rescheduling 12 people, that's still my favorite. She like oh went word. through this list of a whole thing she was doing and she would just rearrange the whole thing. Like, <laughs> you're paying me. <laughs> so good. Let's find oh the time that works for you without in inconveniencing 12 other people. So that's the other thing. How Absolutely. many people are you inconveniencing every time you reschedule something? Exactly right. Exactly right. Just craziness. Um, yeah. And then you were, you were talking about email, um, mm -hmm. you know, you would unsubscribe from other people's emails just to kind of mm -hmm. clean up the, the yeah. email thing list. Um, but then you would get to opt in again if they had something new. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but having um, the automations for post projects. So the other thing that mm -hmm. I encourage my people to do is when the project is done, mm -hmm. have an automation to ask for a review or a testimonial, have that automated. Yep. And you can ask you to set up the automation that if they don't do the thing, that three days later, it nudges them again. Three days mm -hmm. later, it nudges them again. And then it stops nudging them when they do the thing. Right. So I love that. That alone will save a ton of time right there. Yeah. That's one of the things I'm still working on in my own CRM. 
fine tuning my automated outreach pieces. They were working great. And then there was some update and something got a little sideways sideways. And I, I haven't quite been able to troubleshoot it, but that's for a different time people. So tell me a little bit about how you work with clients. This, um, hello to raving fans is your biggest like way people work with you. Right. Right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. What, what does that entail? What does that mean to the people that aren't familiar with marketing online? Marketing online. (laughs) So I do it in two settings. I either do one-to-one or group group Mm -hmm. style, but we'll we'll talk about the one-to-one style. And basically it starts out with the fundamentals of who is your ideal client. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were talking early on in in this um, TV show on there's so many niches that we can go into. Mm -hmm. And when you're starting out, you may not really know. So try a bunch of different ones. Right. And then once you land on one and you, you'll you know what it is, then lather, rinse, repeat with that. So then you find out who your ideal client is, you attract them, you go where they are, mm-hmm. you speak their language, you say the same thing over and over again, you comment on other people's posts and you just provide value without going, hey, hire me because that's salesy, spammy and pushing. We don't do that. We nope. build relationships. Once they do that, and you're probably going to hop on a quick call, get to know them more. It's like where they at, what are they have they tried Mm -hmm. what do they you know where would they like to go ultimately and help them build out that dream and always point them to that dream and you do that also in professional organizing i think as well Mm -hmm. it's like what do you want space to look like what do you want to feel like when you open the door to that room Mm -hmm. how do you want to use the space that sort of thing so the the, kind of the feely words yeah so you walk them through that process of how to set that up for their to appeal to their ideal client yeah absolutely and automate it because Yes. You got the tool to use to help you I, do the things that you intended to do and never quite got around to. Yep. So it's consistent. It is consistent. Yep. <laughs> All right. We've got to take one more quick break. Okay. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we're talking to Kathy Dunn. Neuer of Reclaiming Your Time and Space. Um, and we will be back right after the break. Get the Streamline Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere. Down there, I think. So how how would you say it all ties together in terms of time and space and what fi- reclaiming that can mean for your clients? So what I what I love to help people do is when they're clear on who they're talking to and they're clear on the steps that they get to take, there's no confusion, there's no wasting time, there's no, um, you know, feeling, uh, what do I do next? When they have that clarity, they're doing the do and they have more, many more clients coming in. They have wait lists, which I love mm-hmm. creating, helping them create their wait yeah. lists. That's like amazing and exciting for me. So that's how I, I help them with that. Oh, fantastic. So what kind of closing thoughts would you like to um, leave people with and, and what um, resources might you have for, for the people watching? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks for making it all the way to the end. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you guys have taken a lot of notes and gotten <laughs> some golden nuggets out of it. Um, ultimately, decide on what you want your business to look like. Decide on that goal, that kind of big, scary goal, the kind of one that makes you kind of puke a little bit. Um, and then walk hand in hand with somebody like Miriam or myself to help you achieve that goal. You go faster when you're not alone, right? When you have somebody that's already walked the path recently, <laughs> not teaching yeah. you old stuff, um, that knows the space as it's happening now, that's actually doing it themselves now, just maybe at a different level in the in their uh, business journey. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just partner with them and, and grow your business as you define it. It's your def- definition and find somebody that will honor that. Yeah, I think the accountability piece is so key. Um, even for me, I mean, I always have a coach and yeah. I always have a, a group of, um, I call them my brain trust people that I can reach out to when I'm stuck on something because yeah. Otherwise, you just spin around. So yes. we're back to talking about that level of professionalism, right? Like, what yep. are you doing to improve yourself, to make your business better, to reach that goal so you don't actually puke, you just feel like you're going to puke <laughs> at the beginning. 
Yeah. Once you get into the gap and, and tra traverse the liminal space, it's much there better. Um, <laughs> but just so you all know, you can go to Kathy's website at, um, why do I not have it written down? Re what reclaiming, it? reclaiming time and space. Dot com. Com. That's professional. <laughs> <laughs> reclaiming time and space. I know. I'm like, I know I copied it on here. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Yep. Um, it's right here. I taped it up. Um, so even professionals get a little lost sometimes. Okay. So thank you so much, Kathy. Everybody go check out her stuff. It's great. Um, I've been a big fan for a couple of years now. And um, next time on the show, we are going to be talking to, I have no idea, because I don't have a guest booked yet. But I have something as a backup plan if I don't find someone great to interview. Um, and as always, tell all your friends because it's more fun to get organized together. And you can find all my resources and contact me through my website, morethanorganized.net. And if you have feedback, comments, questions, let me know. Miriam at morethanorganized.net. And that's it. Have a delightful day.